It's not like it's a tax call. Thank you to for coming and attending our opening session, Unmasking Toastmasters, Demystifying Public Speaking. We thought it only fitting that everyone's coming here for the next four days to mask up, put on their costumes, dress like their superhero, their supervillain, and we're going to do the opposite. We're going to unmask Toastmasters. So we have 45 minutes, we'll break it down simply like this, we will, uh, I'll give you a quick uh, intro to what we're going to do in the 45 minutes. Uh, first we'll start off with quick uh, one, two minute introductions by each of us, then we'll go into the panel discussion where we'll ask our panel uh, the same question. I will talk a little bit about Toastmasters and then each of our panelists will speak a little bit about their Toastmaster experience. Robert will then take us into the table topic session which will go about 10 minutes and the very last 10 minutes we'll leave it for Q&A because we know there's always, always questions. So I hope you guys will have lots and lots of questions. <laughs> <laughs> you have to make up for with questions from all the empty seats yes. <laughs> that would have been here. So why don't I start with uh, introductions. I will start with uh, Robert first on my left. Hi, well, I'm Robert Litwin. I've been a Toastmaster for almost five, almost six years now, actually. I've been with the Shaw Toastmasters Club specifically for that duration. I have served in various positions within the club as Vice President of Education, uh, basically making sure all of our members meet their educational needs, President of the club, uh, an area director looking over five Toastmasters clubs. Good afternoon. My name is Peter Mark Bennett. I've been a Toastmaster for just about three years now. Same club as Robert with the, uh, the Shaw Masters Club. What really brought me to Toastmasters was um, just not understanding what, what, they, what Toastmasters what were, um, what, what it was all about. A colleague of mine sort of grabbed me by the lapel and dragged me in one day. And uh, I was blown away with uh, the structure of the learning program, the personal development skills, and the people that are part of the club that uh, are truly amazing. We've got uh, people that English as a second language and with a variety of uh, different objectives uh, that they want to accomplish. My uh, name is Ron Friedman. I've been in Toastmaster for over four years. I did a couple of executive positions in the club, give you public relations and sounds and arm. And what brought me to Toastmaster, as you can see or hear, English is my second language. So I was looking for a way to prove my verbal skills and how to communicate, how to also how to improve my leadership skills. Thanks Ron, thanks Peter Mark, thanks Robert, and my name is Terry, I will be the moderator as best I can for this afternoon's session. I began Toastmasters back in Winnipeg, which is where I'm from, and it came across to me in a very simple question. A computer geek friend of mine who I admired and trusted asked me a simple question one day. He asked me, Terry, have you ever heard of... Toastmasters. Of course I didn't. That's all he asked. He got my interest and he says, why don't you come down as a guest to one of our meetings? We meet Monday nights at 7 o'clock. Come down and see what the meeting is like. It's a small group. I did and he didn't have to say much more. It sold itself. So Toastmasters, what exactly is it? Let's go back a little bit and uh, let's go back to where we started in grade school. 
The only kind of public speaking I got, I received in grade school where I grew up in Manitoba, was probably when I shouldn't have been talking in class. And my leadership practice came from when I was chastised for speaking in class by standing in the corner. That was it. And I didn't discover Toastmasters until I started working after I graduated from college. By that time, I could have used many of these Toastmaster skills. So I started a little late, but better late than never. Now, Toastmasters is a worldwide organization. It's a nonprofit. It began in California with one club at a YMCA by Dr. Ralph Smedley in 1924. And today, globally, we have about 350,000 members, 16,000 clubs, and 142 countries. And most clubs worldwide take part in the meetings in English because they understand that English is the global universal language. Now Toastmasters, Toastmasters takes care of our soft skills. Everyone knows what hard skills are. Those are the skills that we learn in school. Those are the skills we have, learning how to computer program, learning how to drive a vehicle, the things we study in college, in high school, in university. But soft skills are us. Soft skills are the more intangible skills. How we carry ourselves, our body language, our eye contact, how we speak, our confidence in speaking. Can we convince people? Can we hold a conversation with someone? Our ability to encourage people, to inspire people, that is all what we call soft skills. And that's what Toastmasters focuses on, is our soft skills. Now the whole Toastmasters program is broken into two equal parts and they go hand in hand. One part is the speaking part, public speaking, learning how to deliver speeches. The second part is leadership, how to develop your leadership skills. And I'm sure my whole panel here can agree with me that the two go hand in hand. A good leader has to be able to speak well, a good speaker leads well. They go hand in hand. They're like, you can't have one without the other. And that's what Toastmasters takes care of, both the leadership side and the public speaking side. It also teaches you how to think quickly on your feet. A session that Robert will get into in about 15 minutes is table topics, where we learn how to speak between one to two minutes off the cuff. You're given a topic, and you have to come up with something to talk about in that topic for one to two minutes. Where would you use it? Very simply, interviews, job interviews. Robert, tell me a little bit about yourself, for example. Well, as you can tell, I'm obviously <laughs> a Trekkie. Um, I actually, as of this week, gave up my 12-year job at Shaw in order to pursue my lifelong dream of working in a Star Trek and movie museum in Drumheller. Uh, honestly, when I came to Toastmasters, it was because I was having problems. They put me in a role where I was basically supposed to be assisting agents and communicating and coaching agents about their performance and things like that and it was something that I wasn't geared towards. So my supervisor suggested I join Toastmasters in order to do so. Thanks Ron. Maybe I can go on to Peter Mark and just ask Peter Mark what his first impressions, <coughs> how he started with Toastmasters and and well, your view? Well, and my, my personal experience has been, like Robert, is looking to develop myself, and make myself a better person, and part of that's not necessarily speaking, it's listening, and evaluating and taking in what other people are saying and feeding it back into ways to help them improve. Uh, ultimately, I'm looking to take that, those skills into life coaching, uh, and help other people develop whether that's their, their personal goals and objectives. But a lot of that is through the evaluation part of Toastmasters, which is, again, very structured, as Robert pointed out. Not only the meetings are structured, but your, your learning path is very structured in terms of how you can grow and how the projects that help you understand either to be critically listening, uh, providing the feedback to other members or at work or in real life. Ron, how about yourself? 
start like this. Long, long time ago, in a galaxy, sorry, in a continent <laughs> far, far away. You writers. I went to university. <laughs> Always <laughs> writing. So, once I went to university, I had a project when I finished my degree, and I had to present it instead of the professor and other course students. So, it went like this. So, for about a minute, I couldn't say anything. No word came out of my mouth. Like start sweating. It's one of the most frightening experiences a person could have. One thing I realized is that we people, we spend so much time maintaining things. We spend a lot of time cleaning our cars, washing them, cleaning our house, our yards. We spend so much time maintaining things, but it dawned on me one day, how much time do we actually spend on our own selves, skills? Not that much. And I'm reflecting a lot on my own background. We don't spend that much time, if any, on our own soft skills. People think that Toastmasters, because of the name, it makes it sound like you're an MC. But no, it's just the ability to public speak and the ability to learn leadership skills and put the two together to help you out, whether in your career, whether you're going to school, whether you just want to even volunteer, like for Comic Expo. So it dawned on me that Toastmasters is a great fit. Now, I've been volunteering in a number of different organizations like our whole panel has been, and I'm sure some of you have as well, and you just don't get that kind of broad experience volunteering in a group. It's no different than being at work. You have to focus on getting your work done. But in Toastmasters, the reason why I think Toastmasters is so successful is for a number of simple reasons. Well, number one, it meets usually weekly. The meetings are anywhere from one hour, one and a half, to two hours. And each club can tailor their length to whatever they feel is comfortable for them. So the meetings occur weekly. It's not expensive. Most clubs for the year, you pay only $100. And that covers, some of that covers the manuals you get. So you're not working on your own. So it's not expensive. You only have to be 18 years of age or older to join a Toastmasters club. The city of Calgary alone has something like approximately 50 clubs. The clubs are not very big, usually on average from 15 to maybe 25, 30 people. So that means each and every meeting you get personalized focus. You have a chance to speak, you're recognized, it balances things out. You're not lost in a massive crowd. See, everybody gets equal attention in, in the club. And there's a number of different skills that you learn in Toastmasters, the soft skills like eye contact, learning how to carry on a conversation, listening like Peter Mark mentioned is a very big one because part of the meeting, the big part of the meeting is the prepared speeches which go only five to seven minutes each from your manual. You speak but your evaluator who is another member in your club takes two to three minutes later to evaluate you. So they have to listen to each and every word that you say because at the end of the meeting, towards the end of the meeting, the latter half, they have to come up and evaluate your speech. It's constructive feedback. They tell you what your strengths are, what you did well, but they also give you pointers on how you could speak better, how you can use the stage better. They give you tips. It's the most positive, reinforcing organization that I know of. And that's after spending some time in volunteer groups, for example. And the other simple thing that I realized is that it's, it's simple practice repetition each and every week. There was a time where I didn't speak for over three, four months. When I went to do the next speech, I was surprised at how rusty I had gotten. I was nervous. I wasn't able to, to remember the next thing I was going to say. It comes back quickly, but I realized if you don't do it regularly, you can slowly get rusty. So it's a nice way to keep practicing all the time. Why don't I go and ask each of our panelists a series of questions that were bounced around at our last meeting. Good introductory type questions that I'm sure many of you may have. You, Peter Mark. I think the thing that really set Toastmasters apart for me was how everyone was behind improving everyone else. Uh, meaning that everyone was encouraging the fellow members to strive to achieve their goals. 
Uh, and as, as Terry mentioned at the outset, it's, uh, the, the program is structured, but it's self-paced. So you've got people that are at the beginning of their, their journey, of whether it's Toastmasters, and I, I, I always like the, how it can be applied to achieving your own goals, because it is time measured. It is success driven, but it's your success. But there's other people that are helping you underpin that success and driving you to those goals to help you realize that I can do this. Robert? Well, my first impression was ama how amazing and structured it was. You know, the fact that there's always a written out agenda and it showcases, okay, this person has this amount of time to speak about this. So you have your Toastmaster running the meeting, he introduces a topic and everybody in the room talks about that topic for a short amount of time. Even if it's just, hey, I'm Robert, this is what I believe about this topic and then it just goes around the table in a round, Knights of the Round Table discussion, as I like yeah, to say. For sure. Mine, I think the biggest was the fact that it was a structured meeting with an agenda. I thought of it more like a uh, informal gathering, like some people call it, like a coffee club. But it was nothing like that. It started on time, it finished on time, and there was an agenda. So everybody stuck to the agenda, and the roles are all filled with the members. The next question I'd like to ask, I'll start with Ron again, is, is there one skill that you feel Toastmasters has helped you the most? One skill that you use the most? in with either your career, I understand you're a writer, a science fiction writer, uh, very good science fiction writer. Is there one skill that each of you can talk about that you feel Toastmasters helped you with? Uh, I would say the number one skill that I got from Toastmasters is communication. The ability to communicate what I want to convey, the information to convey how to tell it to other people, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in a verbal, verbal form, it could also be in a written form. Like at work, I work with IT, with computers, and a lot of time we need to send email. And I, it, IT people are horrendous for sending very obscure, unclear email, so they don't really understand what they want. Normally they want a few things, but it's not clear. So it, it helped me, Toastmaster helped me to focus my thoughts on one idea and then find the appropriate word to convey this information to my target audience or the email receiver. Peter Mark, how about you? The number one is critical thinking um, in framing what I'd like to do and reflect on myself in terms of how I'm framing things, how that <coughs> is going to be interpreted by people. It's like reading a book. <coughs> you're, you're trying to convey a message to someone and trying to understand what's the best way to do that. So critical thinking to me is one that I use always, whether I'm looking at uh, correspondence, how I'm talking to people, what they're trying to convey to me, whether that's my kids, uh, relationships, professional, family, friends, uh, all of those things. And I'm not saying that I'm, I'm overlaying this professional, critical thinking onto those conversations. It's trying to help unravel and, and uh, take those puzzle pieces and put them back together to, to help people get to where they need to get to. Mm -hmm. Rob? Uh, for me, I sort of learned two major things. Um, the first big thing I learned was confidence. Um, before I was at Toastmasters, I was a fly on the wall, sitting at the back of the room. My, my friends, act, all my colleagues actually had a book that they would keep track of whenever I said something really funny because it was so rare and it would be just out of the blue. I was so quiet and laid back and out of the way that when those zingers came out, it'd be like, did he just say that? <laughs> you know, and so I, I was very reserved, very shy, and Toastmasters just took that and chopped it away, and now I'm not afraid of anything. It's really mm -hmm. helped me get that confidence. Mm -hmm. The second thing I learned was time management. 
because, uh, I mean, if you look at some of those, I don't know if you've ever been on a conference call or in a meeting where there's no agenda, it's just basically we get together and we just talk about something and there's no structure to it whatsoever. And you get this one person that just monopolizes a conversation for 20 minutes and all of a sudden, instead of talking about the problem you're working on, you're talking about someone's vacation or things like that. This really, this structure actually teaches you how to stay to it and if you're straying from the topic, to go back right to it. I think for me the biggest thing that, uh, that I never thought of much before but listening. And it happens when I'm driving in a car, I'm listening to the radio and without even thinking that I'm doing it, I can pick up on words that the DJ mispronounces or the funny awkward things they say. It's something that you learn to do out of instinct. So why don't we lead into table topics? One of the other parts of the meeting is table topics where you learn how to speak something off the top of your head and I'll let Robert explain and demo what it is. So the whole point of table topics is to give you those skills so that you can be asked a question and you can give a response just like that. So for instance, I would give a topic to someone and they'd have to speak for, for a minute and a half to two minutes on average and try to go through it. So what I would do is I would ask a question of Terry like, okay, you, you, Toastmasters inspires you. But what other aspect in your personal life inspires you other than Toastmasters? Okay. So typically we give a window of two to three minutes. The most important thing is, is that you start with a beginning, a quick beginning, a body, and a conclusion. And you try and do that within one to two minutes. So I would say probably the one thing that I like doing that inspires me, that I've learned a little bit more about in Toastmasters, is writing just creative writing. And I only have one to two hours in the morning when I first awake with a clear head that I can write the best. And then I find once I start getting ready for work for breakfast, then my head starts getting cluttered up with all the things I'm thinking I have to do uh, that day. So that first hour of the day I find my head is the most clear and if I can write something then it truly inspires me. If it's good enough I try and turn it into a speech. That is what inspires me the most every day. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask someone from the audience. Mm. All the volunteers. <laughs> if anybody wants to put their hand, you can do so. You want to step outside? If not, I can volunteer. It's a safe place to make mistakes, believe me. We've all done it and still do. All right, the one with the short hair. Give them a good topic. What do they like about Calgary Comic Expo? <laughs> well, thank you for stealing the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I was actually going to ask you, okay, you're, you're obviously a volunteer, um, so what is it that you're looking forward to the most for your non-volunteer hours uh, at this convention? Now feel free to come on out. Don't be afraid like I was. <laughs> actually, I'd love to hear because I haven't come to many of these. Kirill? Right. <laughs> Kirill. Yes. yes. <coughs> In your off hours, when you're not volunteering for the Comic Expo, what are what is what are you most excited about here at the Expo today? Can I not speak without anything? You can, that's the question. Okay. You can give me whatever response you'd like. Oh, uh, can I not use the microphone? Oh. You, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can do that. But you just have to speak a bit louder, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let me know if you can hear me. So the thing that excites excites me the most about not working for the Expo is probably the artist tally. Just because it's inter interesting to see um, the different kinds of art that people bring in from the expo, and these are all people who have either taught themselves or have done it professionally for like years. So by coming in together, you get to see the different art styles that they all bring together. And as a consumer, not only in the cash but also in the eyes, you it's interesting to see because you can see how um, they portray themselves through their artwork. And I think that's the most interesting thing aside from working at the expo. Mm. Yeah. Good. Good job. Good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I think we have a potential member there. <laughs> that, well, that's a great example of, of truly what I was talking about. 
the enthusiasm and the excitement because that's live in the moment. You're you're actually seeing someone's passion about uh, a part of Comic Expo that really inspires her, and uh, you know through that we all get lifted up by saying, "Wow, I'm gonna I'm gonna look for that and mm-hmm. I'm gonna check it out because here's here's a girl that's really got me excited about looking at it because she's she's actually telling me and describing through you know your eyes get big you're not looking at mm-hmm. and you're getting that uh, you're getting that whole for sure enthusiasm and that's excitement. that's exactly where the leadership part starts coming you don't realize it but that's a big part of leadership is how to inspire other people how to motivate other people and that's where the leadership part of Toastmasters starts coming in There's literature that you can grab uh, when we're done in a few minutes on the side. I have my card in the front. We'll all be sticking around for a while if you want to ask us how you can come to a meeting as a guest. There's no cost to come out as a guest. You can come out as many times, at least I've come three times as a guest before I decided on on a club. So it's easy to test out. There's no commitment. There's really not much pressure. Um, You're free to come and evaluate. They go and they go on at a variety of times and places as well. So Different in, days, yeah, noon hour clubs, noon hour, mornings. Yeah. So evenings. there's a lot of flexibility. So check it out. There, It's really worthwhile. It's, it's made a real difference in my life and a lot of people's lives. Just uh, toastmasters.org. And you can... The link from there will come a, down to clubs mm-hmm. in Calgary. Yeah, you can look at a club anywhere. anywhere or ask any of us. We can point you in the right direction. Come out and try it out. So I'd like to thank our panelists for coming out today. I'd like to thank especially all of you in the audience for coming out and (laughs) opening up Calgary Comic Expo. Thanks for coming and hope you enjoyed our presentation. Thank Thank you.